Welcome to AIA Orange County and AIA San Diego's May celebration of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, elevating the stories of 20 architects in 20 days. Now more than ever, as advocacy architects and designers in our local communities, we felt the need to share the stories of our fellow colleagues around us and celebrate their talented contributions to our built environment. Today, this video compilation will also include one-on-one -on -one interviews with emerging professionals, designers, and principal and firm leadership in our regional community. They'll share which Asian role models they admire, how their heritage brings value to their work, and advice for up and coming emerging professionals. The American Institute of Architects champions a culture of equity, diversity, inclusion, and justice within the profession. We see diversity as a strength that brings value to good design and unites us all. One community united and committed to design for good. We're all in this together. 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 AIA for all. Thank you to our program sponsors, FBPA, RMT, and Studio E Architects for giving us the ability to share these stories today. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kevin Bussett, AIA, and I'm an architect with Studio E Architects in San Diego. And uh, my mom is Dutch Indonesian and my grandparents immigrated from Indonesia in the early 1960s. So my Asian American hero it, are my grandparents who immigrated from Jakarta, Indonesia in the 1960s, first to the Netherlands and then to San Diego. They both lived through the Japanese occupation of Indonesia during World War II and then they continued to live in Jakarta through Indonesian independence from Dutch colonialism in which they were discriminated against and forced to flee to the Netherlands. They moved to San Diego in 1962 uh, under a federal immigration legislation called the Walter, the Pastor Walter Act. And I admire them because they basically had to start over from scratch with nine children two different times, first to the Netherlands and then to San Diego. And my life has been incredibly stable and prosperous in comparison to theirs and because of their sacrifices. And I wondered what I'd do in that situation if I were them. Hi, my name is Sharissa Panta and I'm a Filipino who was born in the Philippines. Um, I moved here to the States with my family when I was 11 months and was raised here under a Filipino household in America um, until I was in high school. It wasn't until then when I moved back to the Philippines for high school and for college, um, I would visit my father's hometown in Antipolo, my mother's hometown in Ormoc, but I also was able to explore different parts of the Philippines and studied at the University of San Carlos in Cebu. In the middle of my college years, I decided to bring that tradition and bring my experiences back with me here to the States to finish up my architectural degree in um, New School of Architecture Design San Diego. So that's where I'm at right now and I'm excited to share about my architectural experience and perspective with you. I would love to acknowledge three young entrepreneurs of a multimedia company, ABG. Melody Chang, Helen Wu, and Janet Wang were my source of inspiration when it comes to being a woman and being an Asian American, which have both greatly lacked in multimodal representation throughout the years. Most especially with the surge of anti-Asian hate crimes, racially motivated attacks, and cultural stereotypes, I believe it is crucial for us to advocate unity and support underprivileged people for the sake of humanity. These ladies acknowledge the struggles and opportunities for the modern day Asian American women, inspiring the voices of minority groups and people in color. Coming from different cultures and backgrounds, they all share a great platform in uplifting the confidence, potential, and spirit of people in diverse communities that I bring into my day-to-day -day life and professional career.
Hello, everyone. My name is Romel Elias. I am a partner here at RNT Architects in San Diego, and I've been fortunate enough to be interviewed for uh, for this piece uh, by the AIA. So thank you for that opportunity. Uh, a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I am a somewhat of a first generation uh, Filipino. Um, my parents came here uh, as well as uh, the rest of my family came here about 1980 and uh, when I was about eight years old. So I have been uh, here ever since and grew up here and now have been practicing architecture in San Diego for, um, gosh, over 25 years. So uh, thank you again for the opportunity. I guess uh, in terms of um, heroes, um, Asian, Asian or Pacific Islander heroes, I, I think I would be cliche and would have to say that it's definitely my father. I know that's easy to say. However, given his plight and given uh, the struggles, um, I can't think of any any better hero for myself. Um, you know, our family came from from humble means. Uh, my my father didn't have much, but he was able to provide for our family. He was able to get my whole family, including nine siblings, me being the the youngest, over uh, to the U.S. Uh, for opportunities for a better life and. and since then, we, we basically have have made it. Uh, you know, the, the typical American dream, our family has made it. So um, I think as an inspiration to me, essentially, anytime I get too high or too low myself, uh, it's very easy for me to check myself just by thinking about my father, uh, also my mother, of course, but you know, my, my father and thinking about the flight that he went through and, and all the sacrifices that, um, that he has endured and and has um, done for our family. So that uh, definitely my hero. Hi everyone, my name is Melody Tang and I am a project architect as well as an associate at LPA Design Studios in Irvine. Uh, my background, I was born and raised in this country, I, in uh, New Jersey, in fact, I was born, but I've lived all over the place uh, around the United States. And even though I am a native born American, I also have a close tie to my cultural background, having been the descendant of Chinese people. So my parents, uh, they are Chinese Americans who were born and raised in Taiwan. And so I have a lot of family there and I speak Mandarin Chinese as well as English. I'm inspired by Rosa Shang. Uh, she's a fellow at the AIA and it's on many levels, not just her accomplishments as a designer, a project manager and a project architect for iconic clients like Apple and Pixar, but also her leadership in the AIA as an Asian American woman in an industry where this demographic is often underrepresented. I think Rosa's work to found the Equity by Design initiative is so important. Originally, this project was known as the Missing 32%. And out of that came a lot of research that brought a greater awareness of the need to improve equity and diversity in our profession. Hello everybody, I'm Rachita Ranjit and I'm an international student from India, currently doing my Masters of Architecture and I'm so thankful for everybody who have warmly welcomed me in the United States. Um, I think I am Pai and Mia Ling are one of the most notable Asian American architects, uh, especially when you talk about I am Pai. Like, you can understand that he's understood the need for balance in architecture. Uh, his geometric designs embody the order and harmony. And, and, and also, you know, like they give such a relief to the modern uh, modern world from the mo frenzies of the modern world. And talking about Mia Ling, I think uh, she's one of the person who is so committed to the environment and social cause. And she tries to, you know, indicate all of these features in her art and her art and her buildings have some sort of delicacy or as she describes like very paint paint free so that's one of these these are like two of my ideals who i look forward to especially in my profession hi everyone i am charles la young uh, I, I was born here in santa Ana, california and 
within one month, I was sent to Taiwan. So I, I grew up partially in Taiwan, speaking Mandarin, and within the public school there. And I grew up partially here in America. Um, I graduated with finance, so I didn't go down the traditional architecture route. I had a very comprehensive ex work experience in all realms of industries. Uh, I really like um, the architecture industry, and I think we're about to design the future of the world. And my my uh, ultimate um, ultimate hero is Terry Gould, and he is the Foxconn founder. Um, he built the industry from nothing. Um, he started off trying to get a business and as a plastic mold injector. And um, to do that, to get the business, he, he bought a first class ticket one way so that he could sit next to the HP CEO and pitch his uh, product to him. And in doing so, he is now Terry Gould, the Foxon founder, the ultimate builder for the Apple products. Uh, he supersedes 1.5 million people all over the world, in America, Mexico, China, all over. Uh, he's really something. I, ha I do have an Asian hero uh, who I look up to for my inspiration and his name is uh, Charles Korea. He's an uh, Indian architect and urban, urban planner and he was credited uh, with creating modern architecture in post-independent India. His architecture was very sensitive and uh, very deeply rooted in local architecture uh, while at the same time providing modern structural solutions. Somebody said about him that he had this rare capacity to provide physical form to something as intangible as society and culture. He designed low-income housing, he designed luxury condos, um, but my two of my favorite projects of his are uh, Mahatma Gandhi Memorial in Ahmedabad and uh, Kanchanjunga, a high-rise uh, residential tower in Mumbai. When I was doing my thesis, uh, which was based uh, for a Khadi Center project, I was thoroughly inspired by his work. And, you know, Khadi, again, is, is an Indian fabric, homegrown Indian fabric that connects uh, all the states and all the people of India. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Christine Obniel. I'm a project manager at Ware Malcolm and also an adjunct faculty member at Orange Coast College. I'm a first generation Filipino American. On the topic of a of a hero, my dad actually is probably my biggest hero um, as a Filipino American uh, professional in architecture. He has taught me everything that I need to know about practice and and really just how to kind of approach with a very professional mindset um, and also always thinking ahead. Hi, my name is Michael Tseng and I'm, I'm working at um, KDGY, which is a, a firm um, in Irvine. Um, and my background is Taiwanese. Um, I came here to go to college when I was 24. And back home, I study um, graphic design and fell in love with interior design and architecture. So I decided to come to the United States to go to school. And after that, I really fell in love with the multicultural um, melting pot of United States of America. So after I graduated, I stay at the um, in the country and seeking for opportunities and landed at several firms and until seven years ago, I started with KTGY um, and as an associate principal. So um, that was my background. And what, who do I uh, admire? I, I, I think it's gonna start with our um, Asian heritage, um, very famous I am Pei. And I am Pei and I share the same path which is we both are immigrants seeking for a better opportunity in the state. And when I came to this um, country, 
I was facing several challenges, which is, first of all, I did not speak a, a word of English. And so the language barrier and extreme culture shock was uh, what I had to deal with. But I was quick, I was able to quickly learn the skills, the language skills and, and, and not only to survive, but thriving. And, um, and that was kind of how I came, came to this country and what I am paid and I have um, shared the path with. Hi, I'm Gina Renger, and I am a principal and executive vice president at Ferguson Tate Baldwin Architects, AKA FPBA. Um, I am a Korean American. I was born in Korea and moved to the United States when I was seven years old. And uh, we actually came to the U.S. because my dad is a classically trained vocalist and he was pursuing his PhD and came to the States to study. And uh, we were supposed to go back, but we stayed. And thank God we did, because I don't know how I would have handled uh, going back to, the, to Korea. But um, so I am, I have been, I was born in Korea and now am a naturalized citizen. Uh, I do have an Asian American that I, I admire and it is uh, Yo-Yo Ma. He is a cellist. Um, he rose to the top of his art, but he's not elitist about it. Um, he's very inclusive of people to appreciate art and classical music. Uh, most recently, he took his cello to um, the clinic where he got his second dose of his COVID vaccination. And while he was waiting in the waiting room to be released after that 15 minute period, he took out his cello and played for everyone that was in the waiting room. You know, music truly has the ability to heal the soul. So my Indo heritage impacts my perspective and work because I think understanding my grandparents' story gives me a sense of the sacrifices that a lot of Asian uh, immigrants have made to get to the United States. Uh, our older son goes to daycare in City Heights and on the way to school, we often pass a lot of older Vietnamese women who remind me of my grandmother. And I'm sure that uh, all of them have had to overcome so much just to reach a level of prosperity and security that we Native Americans take for granted. And it's easy to think that you made your own opportunities because you worked hard and deserved it, but a lot of your ability to succeed depends on when and where you were born. Um, my last four years of professional work have been almost exclusively 100% affordable housing within the County of San Diego. And they've been in lower cost neighborhoods and it's always helped me to remember who the end user is even when being lofty about architectural design and detailing as a filipina who has lived in both the states and the philippines i would say that my heritage has a powerful influence on my perspective and my work through respect family, and community. These are some of the core values of Filipinos that arise out of our unconditional concern for others. We respect those who have raised us, guided us, and helped us, and acknowledge them in everything we do. Utang na loob is a Filipino trait that meaning debt of one's inner self. We foster a great sense of gratitude for our social relationships and makes us mindful of our fi families, friends, elders, communities, and those who have shaped us as a unique individual. As an architectural designer, 
I root myself in the essence of creating efficient, enjoyable, and progressive spaces for those around me. The social responsibility of not only understanding the needs of the community, but also surrounding environment is something I take pride in and hope to influence throughout my designs. Every concept, idea, design, and approach follows the same holistic ideology that my own heritage as a Filipino American has given me. You know, this is a this has been a, a tough question for me to think about. Um, you know, how does my heritage impact my work or, or my perspective of work? You know, in general, as a designer, as, a, as an architect, our goal really is to to try to be above the fray of limits or above the fray of, of, of limitations, whether it be cultural or, or uh, heritage, etc. We try to design really to resolve human condition issues. Um, so I don't consciously think that I, I carry my heritage with me uh, with regards to my work. However, you know, being a minority in, in, the, in the field of architecture, obviously, I'm very well aware of that. Um, this is, you, you can't really escape the traditional norms uh, that's embedded within uh, the profession, so, uh, and, and society in general. Uh, however, it, it's, like I said, it's not something I consciously think about. I believe that every person, um, they grow up with certain uh, cultural uh, upbringing or, or heritage, whatever that might be, that's unique to them and, and their family. Um, for me, I think growing up, um, one of the things that I have always learned or been, been kind of groomed to is that you don't always have to be the one talking. Um, oftentimes, it's better to be the one listening, to be the one observing, because when you're talking, you're obviously not listening. Uh, and I think that's something that has been somewhat embedded in, in me, and, and I have taken that to heart. And, and whether or not that's a cultural thing or a familial trait, uh, that's that's not for me to, to answer, but that is something that I do take, uh, I do take with me. I'm very aware of the fact that I don't fit most people's perception of what an architect should look like. I've had more than a few uncomfortable conversations uh, and situations because of that perception, and I've had to dispel some stereotypes about that. I hope that as I am becoming more active as a leader in the architectural profession, that my contributions will help inspire other people who might look like me or might not even look like me, um, but are also underrepresented to be able to inspire them to pursue this path, to know that this profession is important and that minorities and women can and should have a seat at the table when it comes to designing the communities and the spaces that impact all of our lives. I think it is important for you to see uh, heritage as an inheritance that has a great value and which will provide you wisdom throughout your life. Uh, I think as creative individual, it's really important to understand where you are from, where your culture is, where what your history is, because it's literally a part of you, right? It's literally a part of me and somewhere that has provided me so much integrity and also has given me a freedom to, you know, like take decisions and be intuitive and be bold enough for those decisions. Having lived in both worlds, I, I was never really confined to one culture, one thought. Um, what's really cool is I can also research into different cultures. You know, so when we're looking at floor plans, I can look at the floor plans of a typical American home, but I could also look at the floor plan of a Chinese home uh, in China or in Taiwan or in Hong Kong or even Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. Um, and really relate to how people live there and relate to and correspond that to how people live here. It really does help build a bridge between different cultures. I'm not saying that it's um, an ultimate answer to everything we do, but it does help a little bit. Coming from Mumbai, which is a melting pot of cultures and different cultures and classes, I had the opportunity to design several different project types. I have designed for low-income housing, 
for uh, the largest slum in Asia called Dharavi. And I've also designed sprawling weekend homes for the upper classes. So what I bring to the table is uh, this diverse experience and the, uh, the sensitivity to understand the user's needs completely. When I work on my projects, I try to understand the goals of my clients. I come up with a creative solution and make sure that the built environment not only meets the expectation, but exceeds the expectations. Uh, I'm also actively involved in community impact projects. I led Canstruction for three years. Canstruction is, uh, is a project for AEC industry. It's a voluntary project uh, where AEC industry comes together and they build uh, can structures, structures made out of food cans and eventually the food cans are donated to uh, Orange County Food Bank. I have always used the opportunity to, uh, for construction to put together projects that, are, that talk about socially relevant issues as well as uh, provide in, in a way a charity outlet. Uh, one of the construction themes was a Ganesha structure and we talked about how in an eco-friendly manner the Ganesha festivities can be carried out. My heritage has a very good spirit of hospitality and so I try to bring that with my client relations, always looking to help um, my, my clients and, <clears throat> and colleagues and so I think that that hospitality spirit is what I bring to the workplace. And I would say my design pri uh, primary focus is on vast majority of population and demographics. When it comes to Asian American and Pacific Islander population, my design would focus more on how the cultural aspect may impact their shopping and dining experiences and interacting with the space and how branding may benefit a um, specific audience group and how the project can bring everyone together successfully, regardless of the cultural background. The way um, heritage impacts my perspective and my work is, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I am a K Korean, um, born and raised for the first seven years. And Korea, uh, in Korean, in the Korean language, is called Han Kuk Han, which literally translates into uh, so Han means one. Kuk translates to nation or people, and um, so Han Kuk means one nation or one people. And uh, Koreans think um, more of the collective rather than the individual, and and I think that's the way I approach sort of life and work is. Um, that the that the collective uh, is an important part, and not just the individual. And now that I am a Korean American, um, my perspective is that of respecting the melting pot and and embracing the multi, uh, multicultural aspect of this great nation, right? That that I live in now. So my advice for emerging professionals is after almost 12 years in the profession, I've learned how hard it is to achieve even modest success in the world, both personally and professionally. Um, my advice is always to stay humble, pay your dues, practice gratitude, um, but don't be afraid to speak up. As always, it's important to be genuinely interested in people. I think ultimately architecture is people centered. A design concept is an important umbrella, but I'm actually more concerned in the same way that my grandparents' story is a direct result of uh, federal legislation. I'm really interested in how affordable, pro affordable housing is connected to 
uh, a larger legislative agenda? Is it part of a bond measure? Are we able to maximize density through a new state law or a, a municipal zoning ordinance? Um, does the resident population have specific needs that are being accommodated through laws? Or is it utilizing a special exception in the building code to achieve something unconventional? So I'm really interested in understanding how um, the laws we make become embedded in the DNA of our architecture. I believe there are endless possibilities for the next generation of emerging professionals. Great innovation stems from ideas fostered by curiosity. So my advice would be to pause and interpret the world around you. People, technology, societies, the environment, and our world are constantly changing for the better or for worse. Being able to respond to these changes through our expertise and sense of humanity is what will greatly influence the potential of tomorrow. Realigning your day-to-day -day efforts with the expectations you have for your future and the future of our world, while inspiring others to do the same, is a more intentional approach in creating a better world that design itself can't do alone. Architecture addresses the built infrastructures and the demands of the client, but great architecture creates conceptually rigorous spaces and responsive designs that positive, positively influence our people, communities, environments, and future. I've been doing this for 25 plus years now, and, and I have um, I have had many mentors along the way, and I have mentored a few uh, in in my um, in my profession as well. As far as advice, I would say I think architecture in general it's a long and rich tradition. So my advice would be to definitely respect respect that tradition, uh, but uh, doesn't mean you have to do it things the same way it's always been done. Definitely, definitely bring your own unique flavor to the show, uh, so to speak, and and definitely change things up uh, for, for those who are coming up in this profession and do your thing. Um, also, be patient. Uh, it's, it's a lifelong lesson. It's not something that you will master. Uh, it, it's, you know, I, I tend to call it kind of like a meandering river, right? And um, you have to flow and you have to grow with it and you have to 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 work your way down the river and and, and in order to get to to the very end and, and for you to grow so be flexible and and i think the most important one that i can uh, in terms of uh, advice i can i can give is to make sure you pay pay it back or pay it forward really um like i said as I was growing up, there are many mentors that have helped me along the way. Uh, many of them probably don't even know that they have made such a big impact in my career. Uh, and I try to do the same thing uh, on my way uh, to, to, to the younger staff and to the younger professionals. And I would encourage everyone to do the same thing and, and really lend a hand to those who are coming behind you because ultimately your legacy is not going to be, you know, the, the fancy, amazing building that you design. It, it's going to be the lives that you impact along the way in your, your career. And I think that will have a more lasting uh, legacy than, than anything that you could ever build. I would say you should be proactive in setting your career goals and going after them. One of the biggest things I always tell people is get your license as soon as you can to be a licensed architect and be able to say those words, yes, I'm an architect. Be curious also and just take advantage of every opportunity to learn i once heard this quote that is just so true this profession is a marathon not a sprint the amount of knowledge that you need to be a good architect encompasses a thousand areas of expertise and you just can't fast track it i know we live in a world where everything needs to happen right now and we just want to get to where we're going faster but no matter how brilliant or talented you are there's just always so much more to learn. You'll be spending your whole lifetime learning how to be a better architect. And I think having a spirit of humility and openness to learning from other people who have walked that path before you is really going to help you get far.
for the next generation of emerging professionals since i'm also like starting out as an emerging professional i have a lot of uh, i have this very important advice to uh, to students especially you know like observe yourself observe the environment and observe the way you creating visions for your design you know i see many a times and it's happened with me also that you know while we are explaining our designs we are more like we we are so subjected to pronouns like he used the space like that or she used the kitchen like that i would say you know like see the user instead of being subjected to the pronouns and also while you're creating your renderings or you know like showcasing your projects make sure that you are adding adding that diverse population that is surrounding you and you know like enhancing and doing justice to that a uh, particular diversity and creating inclusive uh, environments it wouldn't be an advice for them it, it's actually my goal right now uh, i believe that this technology is accelerating um, the m1 chip from apple is revolutionary i mean just think about when pentium first introduced when intel first introduced the pentium processor and how that revolutionized the computer industry Well, M1 is sort of in that same phase. They just implemented M1 into the iPad Pro, and so think about how M1 processor is faster than a 2019 Intel processor uh, by multiple, I think, by a lot. And that same processor is now in your iPad Pro as a base. And not only that, the M1 processor isn't the newest technology. There's actually second generation third generation that's already ready in the silicon manufacturing world so it's just really amazing to see where this is going to go now knowing that technology is just going to blow up hardware wise well this then i think it's really important for architects or designers to really think about where we want to direct our tools because i don't think architecture is about creating really pretty renderings or graphics it's really about designing this space around us and all the tools that we learn in school is really just for communication if your client has perfect trust in you uh, you wouldn't really need to do anything in, in terms of rendering you would just have the construction documents and have it printed uh, for the contractor to do work if the city trusted you completely you wouldn't even need to submit for plan check if the contractor trusted you completely and have perfect you know download from your brain they wouldn't even need a construction document set so the the question of where technology can really be leveraged into the way we do things is really an important part i think um, i'm really exploring right now i would like to say architects are have a huge responsibility and are a part of a very very important industry built environment has great uh, impact on every aspect of human behavior it affects how patients recover in hospitals it affects how students learn in schools it affects the employee engagement levels in uh, at workplaces so my advice to young professionals would be to be creative to to be sensitive to understand the power of design and most importantly to infuse passion in all projects small or big the advice i would give to emerging professionals is to make sure that you diversify what you bring to the profession i think um after 2008 that There are several options that one can approach architecture and architectural degree with and so um diversify your options and and be open to to your career being able to pivot at any given point in time. Well, while studying interior design um in interior design school, I established a passion for architecture. And throughout my career, I've not only had great mentors um help me alone to to achieve my goals but throughout my career I have dedicated myself not only going through the proper steps to become a licensed architect um but also immerse myself in the world of retail architecture and that was that was where my passion was and that was what I really wanted to do for my career and I've also always believed that I can achieve 
anything if I put my mind to it. A success, remember the success does not come automatically, but through dedications and hard work. So the advice that I would give to the next generation of emerging professionals is uh, in light of today being Earth Day, I wanted to say to the next generation of emerging professionals that we can make an impact on the environment by being good stewards through conscientious design. We have the ability to heal the environment. We have the ability to heal the body. We have the ability to heal the soul through great design. So do it. We hope you enjoyed seeing and listening to a slice of our very diverse and talented design community today. Thank you and goodbye. Namaste. So thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about my heritage and as they say in Dutch, taught zines. Selamat lahat. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you again and maraming salamat to everyone there, uh, to all my Filipino kababayan. Uh, and thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, everyone. Danielad. Thank you. Namaste. Bye. Thank <laughs> you. Um, and salamat. And thank you. And thank you. And and um, thank you. 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 Thank you.